you guys know this guy named Stefan Molyneux. Um, what I found was some videos on this guy. This guy's a big time Trump rationalizer. Something very interesting that I found was a big flip flop on immigration. And I'm just curious to know why uh, he has not addressed his flip flop on this situation. And my speculation is that he did this for uh, views, fans, you know, support, clicks, and money. But, anyways, he did a massive 360. Or sorry, 180, not a 360. 360 would be the same fucking position. Um, but anyways, he did a massive 180 on his position on immigration. So check it out here. If you fear immigrants because you are afraid that immigrants are going to vote to take away your rights, I think it may be well worth looking at, say, the rough complexion of everyone who's running the war on terror. I guess they got Gonzalez in. But prior to that, with the exception of Condi, kind of like a chalkboard, you know? Kind of like the Mount Rushmore encased in snow. Very much tidy whities with power. So the people who did, ran the foreign policy that provoked all this foreign aggression in 2001 and before and afterwards. The people who run uh, the military-industrial complex, the people who keep raising your taxes, the people who set up the Fed, the people who are pretty much involved in borrowing enormous amounts of money that are going to scalp the hides off your grandchildren, hopefully, if not your children, if not you. The people who are scraping the Social Security larder dry of even the shelf paper and leaving nothing but a li I IOU note and a laughing clown head. Those people, uh, the people who voted for the Patriot Act, the vast majority of people in Congress, the vast majority of politicians as a whole, not so much foreign, really. Not so much minorities. Not so much other cultures. Pretty much your goddamn culture. Do you see why I think, at least, it's so patently idiotic to feel afraid of Mexicans? <laughs> Mexicans! Undocumented, illegal, can't vote. Mexicans! They're your enemy, please! This is so non-empirical, it's ridiculous, and I don't even know where to begin. It's such a load of crap to be worried about immigrants. Was it a bunch of wetbacks who were out there jabbering about WMDs at the UN? No. Was it a bunch of black brothers who declared war and invaded a sovereign, though horrible, country for no reason? No. Is it the Chinese community or the Muslim community that is clamoring for the Patriot Act? No. It's pretty much people like you, eh, for the most part. You know, if you're a minority listening to this, yo, brother, perhaps you can teach me how to dance. But it's the whiteies. <laughs> It's the whiteies from Harvard who are shredding your lives, who are enslaving your children, who are sending you to war, who are provoking the rat's nest of foreign dictatorships with troops stationed all over the world, who are funding the government, who are financing the planet, the state prison planet. They're the whiteies. And some Jews. <laughs> but it's not Mexican illegals that are taking away your Freaking rights! So, all right, Steph, want to go through with the yeah. So, three core principles of real immigration reform. One, a nation without borders is not a nation. There must be a wall across the southern border. Now, a quarter of a Mexico's population has entered into America. Uh, people claim that there are only 11 million illegal immigrants. That number has not budged since 2000. And uh, five, but if you extrapolate the growth in illegal immigration beforehand and factor into things like you can measure how many remittances are being sent back uh, to Mexico, um, I mean, because 
in general, Mexico will get more money by taxing remittances sending back, being sent back than having workers in Mexico. So it's a great deal for the Mexican government to send people north and have the resources flow back south. But using a variety of calculations, uh, some people have got to around 30 million illegal immigrants in the United States, which is, you know, close to 10 percent of the uh, of the population. And uh, so Let's just pause on that one second, Steph. A quarter of the population of Mexico has moved to the United States. Let's pause on that for one second. Oh, my God. It is, it is one of these, like, jaw-dropping statistics. I thought maybe it would be 8 or 10 percent, but 33 percent. Oh, sorry, 25 percent. 25 percent of the entire population of Mexico has moved to the United States. And, of course, um, and we'll get into, you know, there's this myth that illegal immigrants can't get welfare and can't vote and so on. Uh, this is not true. These are just lies put out by, uh, by the left and by a lot of libertarian outlets as well. Uh, because libertarians are like, well, you know, freedom of movement and so on. Sure, in an ideal world, you know, where there's uh, small to no government and, and uh, none of this uh, coercive welfare but private charities and so on, it'd be wonderful to let everybody move wherever they wanted. That was the case in the 19th century. There was no such thing as a passport till the early part of the 20th century. Uh, you could just move and go wherever you wanted. That's a wonderful thing. But that ain't the world we're living in right now. And, yeah, uh, if you don't have a democracy and you don't have people voting, they can point guns at you to further take wealth from your pocket and institute a bunch of laws, which you probably don't agree with, then immigration is just called moving. It's not a problem. Beautiful. No problem with it. But that ain't the world we're living in. And that ain't the w way we're going to get to the world that we want, right? I mean, if you have a bunch of socialists moving into a country voting socialist, what do you think is going to happen to that country? This is not brain surgery. Now, the other way that I'd like to sort of approach this question, if you will indulge me for a few more minutes, is to picture right? empathy, right? Empathy is really at the root of a good number of principles, especially ethical and moral principles. And I'd like you to think about not how you look to immigrants or anything like that. I'd like you to imagine that you're born in Mexico. I'd like you to imagine that you're born in Mexico. Because being born in America is just a coincidence. It doesn't make you right, it doesn't make you valuable, it doesn't make you better, it doesn't make you moral, it doesn't make any of those damn things. It's just a freaking coincidence. And you can't claim any rights based on where your mother happened to frickin' squat and drop. <laughs> I mean, imagine if she'd been kidnapped and dropped off in Mexico just before you were born. I guess you'd be naturalized U.S. But whatever, whatever situation you could come up with, do you happen to be born in Mexico? Maybe your mom donated some eggs to an infertile Mexican woman and boom, your dad was down, <laughs> got drunk, and you happen to be born in Mexico. Now, in Mexico, the standard of living is wretched. Mexico was the first communist country in the history of the world at the turn of the 20th century, and its standard of living has remained mostly unchanged for about 100 years. Now, I'd like you to picture knowing that there's no real difference between Mexicans and everybody else on the planet. I'd like you to consider the amount of violence that Mexicans are subjected to such that their standard of living has remained mostly unchanged for about a hundred years. Look at America, look at England, look at Canada, look at Sweden, look at Switzerland, look at Norway, look at, you know, all of these sorts of places. Standard of living, 10, 20, 30 times improvement. Mexico, bing, flatlined. Why? Are they different? Are they lazy? No, of course not. Of course not. Fucking gun in the room. Huge motherfucking gun in the room. And it's like Soren's eye. I always got this gun pointed at them. You know, one thing, too, just about immigrants in crime or illegal immigrants in crime is why is it controversial to say that 100% of illegal immigrants have committed crimes? Because they're in the country illegally. Because yeah, therefore, just they've committed a crime. With the mic. <laughs> it's like if you don't carry a copy of the Great 
if, if you don't carry a copy of The Great Gatsby, that's just a document. Does that make you a criminal? Well, they are. Well, and on, not only are they criminals by definition according to the state status laws, but also you have an, a whole bunch of people in your community who have no access to the legal system for resolving their disputes. And, and they're going to way... have disputes, and how are they going to resolve them? If they can't have access to the government legal oh, system, yeah. how are they going to resolve their disputes given the culture that they came from? How are they going to resolve their disputes if they can't, if they not only can't access the government uh, dispute resolution system, but also can't set up any alternatives to themselves because they have to stay under the radar? Well, they're going to resolve their disputes in the way that most criminal gangs will resolve their disputes, which is through violence, which has a huge number of innocent casualties and uh, innocent bystander as, as well, including children. And we haughty creatures would rather keep them enslaved than free ourselves. We would rather keep them enslaved by building cage walls and shooting at them. And as one person suggested on this forum, I freaking well hope facetiously mining the border. Our goal seems to be not to free people but to enslave us both. Now imagine, back to our Mexican mind adventure, that all of the smart people are leaving. So if you have any intelligence or ambition or desire or goal for something, anything better, anything, to get away from the benditos, anything, then all your friends who are worth talking to are all leaving and they're all going to the states where you can build something where you can you can build a house you're not just laying bricks down a highway forever you can actually build something you can build a life you can get married you can have children the children will grow up to be doctors and lawyers not slaves grow up to be entrepreneurs not slaves it's your children and, and who could you want better things more for than your children? That your children will have a life that will have opportunity and potential and shape and growth and joy and wealth and opportunity and all those good things. Who among us would not make it to the border? Who among us would not cling to the axle of a truck to get across that border? And how would we feel about those of us who say, no, no, we're in here. We're comfortable. We got lots of goodies. You people are slaves. We got lots of goodies. You people are slaves. So um, we're going to put up a wall. How would you feel? That they were senten sentencing you to nothing but a life of laying bricks end over end. You'd feel suicidal and, and you'd feel enraged. And this really is, is why I say that it's, it's a test not just of libertarian principles. It's a test of basic humanity. And when you see people in the dungeon of another land, you don't say, seal that fucker up. Pave over the exit to the dungeon. Seal him in. No. You invite them. You open your arms wide. Because the, Im <laughs> the immigrants are not who you have to fear. They're not the ones taking away your freedom. They're not the ones enslaving you. They're not the ones taxing you. They're not the ones stripping you of your civil liberties. They're not the ones betraying their sworn oath to the Constitution. They're not doing any of those things. They're just trying to build a house. They're just trying to get by. And if you're worried about them voting, then don't get rid of the immigrants. Get rid of the government. And, of course, the people who've come to America legally, they're the ones most suffering from illegal immigration. And uh, it is certainly my hope that their voice 
uh, will prevail in their preferences and the um, fragile edifice of Western empiricism, self-criticism and voting above your own ethnic interest is uh, going to prevail. Uh, without it, uh, you know, uh, we are not going to turn Mexico in America into America. We're going to turn America into Mexico and a great and powerful light in the world will go out. What's up, guys? It's Saul Hill here. You guys are watching the Progressive Voice. Make sure you guys click subscribe down below. We're fighting Donald Trump tooth and nail, and we need your help.